Hello everyone and welcome to a very 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 exciting tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create this kind of cool burger menu animation using SVG and a library, a JavaScript library that we've developed called Moveit. So a pointer to the Moveit library. Uh, we have been developing this library for a while. It's under development yet. So I'm going to post the link to this library as well. Just a bit of an introduction. It's a SVG path animator. So what it does is that it animates the SVG path using SVG stroke dash array and stroke dash offset attributes. Two of the most important things about this library, obviously it's pure JavaScript and uh, it utilizes CSS transitions, basically meaning that more efficient animations. And for now we don't have uh, the capability of integrating with any other third party uh, you know animation timing functions so basically we only support the transitions that CSS has which is ease in ease out ease in out and cubic bezier ease in means that start it's, it's a slow start and then constant speed it's a constant speed and at the end of the animation it's gonna get slow ease in ease out is uh, slow start and slow end and cubic bezier gives you parameters to kind of you know control the speed of your animation differently right so now let's get started with this uh, library with the examples that we've provided over here so for those of you who do not know how to utilize SVG path and you know elements just get back to my previous tutorial I have a comprehensive tutorial on how to create path and elements using SVG the link is actually right now down in this video you can click on it and go to that and watch that and come back again but now let's get started I'm gonna copy this uh, piece of SVG code and I'm gonna go to one prototype on Codit, Codit website and then I will paste it over here so you can see that using the SVG circle tag, defining C X and C Y, which is kind of the center of the circle within our SVG, and then obviously we have a radius, and then using some uh, inline attributes to define the uh, styling, you can see that we pretty much have this. Now for the move it part, I have already uploaded the file to our servers, but you obviously can go to this github page, go to moveit.js, copy the content of this file, and then uh, basically paste it in a JS file and then start using it in your, including it in your projects. Otherwise, we also added it to our website, which is here. So you can pretty much include this in your HTML uh, file and start using it, right? All right, so getting back, to where we were. Uh, now we have our SVG and then the way move it works is that you want to first initialize your path. So this basically says that our circle, which is here selected by its ID, uh, we want it to start at zero and end at 40% of its full length, right? But let me just copy and paste this in our JavaScript section. So what you see over here is that we have our circle, right, with the ID circle, and I want it to be uh, starting at the zero of the full length of the circle, which is zero, nothing, up until 40%, right, which just starts here. So obviously I need to first add the library, so I'm going to go here, http, uh, www slash moveit.js, right, and then save it. And there you go. You will see that with the put function, getting two parameters, first your element and second an option, defining your start and end, you can get to this shape, right? And now, in order to animate it, going back to our GitHub uh, documentation or readme page, I will just copy this and paste it here. And you can see the cool animation that it generates, right? And in order to tell you what animate does, so you, initially set your start and end on your path 
and then you animate to your final state which is a start from zero and end from 100% and what move it does it kind of creates an animation based on the duration that you have defined the delay that you have defined and the timing function that you have defined for your transition right so again you can see that the animation looks like this so I can change this to zero zero and then you can see it starts from nothing and then it just gets the full path or I want to set a initial you know value which is 0 to 10 and I want that value to go around my circle so my end position then should be 90 and 100 so you can see how it animates that right all right cool so I think it's so and also I can obviously choose different timing function so it starts slowly now and then quite fast so let's get back to our tutorial what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a new prototype, right? And then, as always, I will create my container class. Going back to this, I'll just for convenience, I just copy and paste this SVG with all its path. As you can see, it looks like this. And then, as you know, I have already defined first, middle, second, but also I can use CSS classes, like let's say SVG path. I want my field to be nothing. I want my stroke to be, let's say, black. And then maybe stroke uh, width of maybe five. Yes, or maybe four. And then I want my stroke line cap to be round, right? So it adds a little bit of a roundness to the rigid end of my path, right? So we have it here. I'm going to use uh, jQuery just for the interactions and interactivities by clicking and stuff. And then I obviously need to add Kotus move it library here, kotus.com slash moveit.js. So that is included as well. Now what I want to do is I want to give my container the same width and height as my SVG. So width 100 pixel height 100 pixel I just want to center it in my page so position absolute then top 50% left 50% and I use transform translate minus 50% and minus 50% right that kind of centers it in the page now in order to be able to click on it and then have the animation started what I'm going to do is that on my parent container I will just create another div called with the class trigger and then I will say my trigger let's just give it a background to see where it is uh, with setting the width 100% of its container and height 100% of its container there it is and then what I want to do is I want to position it to absolute right uh, and then give it a top of zero so it kind of covers it Maybe I will just remove the background here and then give it a cursor pointer so that you get a visual that you can click on it, right? Now I'm going to say when my document is ready using jQuery, I will pass it a function and I will ask it to do what I'm going to say here. So what I'm going to do is I'm initially going to start using move it library to set the initial positions so that it looks something like this, right? So I'm going to say put, I will pass my first element. So the good thing with move it is that when you define the ID of your path to whatever, it, you can basically just use that and it kind of detects it. Otherwise, you can also use a class attribute. So well, let's just do it. Let's give it a class. Maybe uh, let's just give it a class of uh, let's say um, first uh, path, or basically like this first path. And then you can basically use J JavaScript to kind of say uh, document dot query selector, and then give that as your uh, 
parameter here and this is going to be your path and then you can choose path here instead right but for convenient I'm going to just use first because I have already defined it as the ID and then as the second parameter I pass it in JavaScript object by defining my start to be 0% right and my end to be maybe 14% right so you can see the top bar now is kind of masked only showing this part so from 0% to 40 so it doesn't actually show the rest of it I'm gonna do the same thing for my second which is the bar to the bottom so I'm going to choose second so you can see that it's not perfectly the same so I will choose maybe something like maybe 11 or 11 is a little bit short maybe 11.5 yep so you can see that we initially have set our top and bottom bar because the center was quite okay uh, and now we want to animate it but how when we click on trigger we want the animation to start so I'm going to say uh, using jQuery selector I'm going to say trigger and then on the click of it I want to pass a function right so what I want to do is I will say move it animate I will give it my first and then as the second parameter let's say I want to start to be somewhere in the end and end to be somewhere in the end as well right so I'm going to give it a 78 percent and then uh, end to be 93 percent and these values I came up with some trial and error playing with it to kind of find out what which, what should be the last you know position or the last place where that dash or whatever we call it the path should be right so I'm going to define a duration let's just give one second so now when I click on it you can see the cool animation that it does right I'm going to just do the same thing I'm going to copy this piece of code I will choose my second and then I will again using trial and error, an error I figured out that this is 81.5 and this is 94 so if I and you you should be able to know that you should know that the duration for both of them should be the same so that they all say happen at the same time so you saw how cool it created it and obviously for the middle one we want to sort of somehow hide it right and the way I do it here since I know the original value is 0 to 100 percent I'm gonna say move it animate and then I have my middle here I will just put middle and then as the second parameter I say start to go to because by in initially it's 0 and 100 percent right so I want to say start to go to 100 to 50 percent which is middle and I want the end to also go to 50 percent right and also I will define a duration of one uh, second so see what happens when I click on it boom right so it is important to actually set the initial value for the middle as well not just assume it so let's say middle I want to start to be zero and the end to be hundred percent right so now you'll see you have this kind of cool animation but you can see we only create it when you click on it but when you click it again you wanted this animation to to go back right and in order to do that I'm just gonna switch to this layout because it's easier and in my JavaScript so when I click on the trigger button I just need to define a variable up here maybe which is open and false so by default the open variable is false obviously it hasn't started it's not open yet so I will just put a condition here if not open which is the case right I'm just gonna move all of these three animations right uh, inside if not open right so now it just has the animation so now when the open is there but otherwise so here I would just put it else so when the open is actually true 
meaning that it's the end of my animation. I want to move this one, which is my initial, uh, my top bar, this one, to go back to its original place, right? And my original place, obviously, as you know, is 0 to 14%. So I'm going to just change it to 0 and 14%, right? And at the end of each click, I have to toggle this open. So I'm going to come here and set the toggle, sorry, the open to be the opposite. So basically, when you click on the animation, it opens it. And at the end of the click, I just set it to this false. I set it to true, right? So that next time when it comes to here, it doesn't check this. It just checks it. Not open, no, so goes to the else and then you know just runs this animation. So if you look at this here, you can see that the first one goes back. I'll do the same thing for my middle. So this should go to 0 to 100 percent, and I will do the same thing for my third, uh, sorry, the second, which is the last part, and then I will choose 11.5 which was the initial value. So right now, you can see that you have this very cool animation. And using the easing function or timing, you can make it much more better. I'm going to go back to the uh, first one, and I'm going to just get the timing function that I chose. So I'm going to choose this timing function that I created. Going back here, going all the way up, I define a variable called timing. And then I define this as a cubic Bezier. So I'm just going to go here. In all of my animations, I add a timing uh, attribute to be timing, right? Just copy and paste it for all of my animations, right? Over here, over here, and over here. So now you can see how cool using a different timing function, you create a very cool animation. All right, so there we go. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Again, go ahead, check my tutorial on how to create SVG path. Try to go to the GitHub and then uh, to the GitHub page of uh, Move It. Take a look at the descriptions that I put over here. Try to utilize it, create awesome stuff. A bunch of other tutorials that I will make in the future are based on Move It. Move It is going to be much more awesome than what it is. And we're going to go ahead and create super awesome stuff in the future. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. If you like this tutorial, please like and share it so that I can continue to create these awesome tutorials. Have a good day and night.